There are many people who would like to try hand engraving, but are not ready to invest in a pneumatic handpiece system. I'll be the first to tell you that all of my work is done with the GRS Graver Mach AT, which is far easier to use and allows me greater control and precision than hand pushing. But for centuries, engravers used basic hand tools and produced beautiful engraving, and some still do today. You should also know that hand push engraving is a very steep learning curve compared to using a handpiece. For best results, you should have a rotating engraver's vise or block. While it's possible to mount a practice plate on a wooden block and turn it with your fingers, an engraver's block is the way to go and will maximize your chances for success. The gravers I'm using for this demonstration are 1.8 mm GRS C-Max carbide gravers. These are excellent gravers, but because they're carbide, they can only be sharpened on a diamond lap or a diamond or ceramic bench stone. I would suggest getting a couple of GRS Glen Steel 332nd inch square graver blanks, which can be sharpened on a synthetic stone or a natural bench stone. Later on, you might want to invest in a power hone with diamond laps for fast and efficient sharpening. For sharpening a hand push graver, the GRS Easy Graver 105 degree sharpening fixture will do the job very easily and with perfect accuracy. Since this is a short demonstration video, I don't have time to go into the details of how to sharpen, but the Easy Graver fixture comes with instructions, which are also available online at grstools.com. Here's a quick rundown of the Easy Graver fixture and the gravers it produces. Easy Graver produces a fixed geometry graver. There are no adjustments and it makes graver sharpening a no-brainer. For handpiece engraving, a short heel of approximately one quarter millimeter is the ideal size for my work. The bad news is that it works great for handpiece engraving, but it's not the easiest graver to use for hand pushing. The good news is that extending the heel to two to three millimeters produces a graver that is far easier to control when hand pushing. The trade-off is that long heels can produce more heel drag, but with a bit of practice and a bit of deburring the finished work, it can be very clean and attractive. While on the subject of heels, there's been some discussion on the name for this long, faceted underside of the graver. I've always called it a heel, while others refer to it as lift angle, belly, or wet, as in whetstone. I hold the graver in the traditional way, which is between my thumb and index finger, with the graver handle resting in my palm. My thumb is forward and the graver extends just past the end of my thumb and the tips of my fingers grip the handle. If you wrap your fingers around the handle, it's impossible to engrave at a low enough angle without your knuckles dragging on the surface of your work, so only the fingertips do the gripping. I should add that the graver is mounted in a GRS QC graver handle. The graver is held stationary in my right hand, and my left hand rotates the vise and turns the work into the graver. While it's often referred to as hand push engraving, the majority of cuts are not made by pushing, but by turning the vise into the graver. It's also important to keep the left hand below the surface of the vise, as a graver slip can result in a very painful stab wound. My practice plate is copper, which is very soft and an excellent material for practice. I've sketched in a scroll design, which I'll engrave using the EG 120 degree graver, and then later switch to a 105. I'm experimenting with these two geometries, but have pretty much decided that I have more control with the 105 than the 120. The backbone of the scroll is always my first cut, and it's being cut in a counterclockwise direction. Since I'm right-handed, the graver naturally points to the left, and I have much greater control cutting counterclockwise. Some cuts require an additional pass in order to achieve the width and depth that I'm looking for, and I also roll the graver slightly to widen the cut.
The narrower V of the 105 is a bit easier for me to control, especially when cutting clockwise shading cuts. The top of this graver is a bit different than the previous 120 I used, but it has no effect on its cutting performance. Its long heel is the same as the previous graver, except that it's a narrower V. I have to be especially careful with intersecting lines. The moment the graver breaks through into an intersecting line, there's no resistance and an overshoot can easily occur. A gentle pass with some 4 aught steel wool smooths out the finished work. Be extremely careful when using any abrasive on hand engraving as it only takes a second to ruin fine detail. If you'd like to try your hand at hand push engraving, the Easy Graver Sharpening Fixture is an excellent way to start. I use this fixture for nearly all of my handpiece engraving as well. For more hand engraving videos and DVD sales, visit my online store at engraving-videos.com and be sure to join me on Facebook at facebook.com slash masterengraver.